All right, folks, back on the Boston Man Show, friend of the show, Mark Ingles, be Delaware Blue Hens, champs of the CAA. Got it done. Coach, good to talk to you again. How's life for you guys in the Blue Hen world, man? Uh, we are uh, we are enjoying this ride right now. You know, it's the great thing about winning on Tuesday night. And then we got a couple of days to really enjoy this and celebrate it and let it sink in and kind of trying to process it all. And, and uh, but really happy for our team, really happy for our players to be able to experience that and, and get it done on a big, big stage. Now, for you, Coach, man, what were the key factors for you all winning in D.C.? I know you all had a you know tough year. And you, you, you took the hard route to do it. You're the fifth seed. You're going to be mm-hmm. number four seed, the one and the two to get, get the job done. So for you guys, what are the key factors in doing this D.C.? And what happened before you went there to kind of get you all focused for, for this run? Well, I mean, going into the year, you know, we had uh, high expectations and, and we were the preseason favorite in the league. Uh, I think we played with the weight on our shoulders a little bit throughout the year. We had some injuries uh, and we lost three games in a row to end the season. And, um, you know, we got back and really refocused after losing a tough game to Towson uh, a week ago and got back to doing some tough stuff on the defensive end. And, and as you saw, we held, we held three teams uh, to under 60 points on the defensive end to be able to win a championship and really challenged us uh, our toughness. And we had to get back to doing some dirty stuff, got to be physical and gritty team if we were going to be able to compete for a championship down there. And, as you know, it's amazing what one game, one win can do for the confidence of a team to be able to get that first one against Drexel on Sunday. You're in the tournament. You have a win. We had a, a great vibe and energy about us after getting that one done. And then you're just playing as loose as possible. So trying to balance challenging our toughness and being better defensively, but also trying to keep our guys loose and having fun. So I think those couple of days of practice that we had leading up to it were really important for our team. Yes, you know, tournament setting, having – Got keep a team in the 50s in a tournament setting on yeah. back to back to back where legs can become a factor if you let them become a factor. Talk mm-hmm. about the toughness of your guys because you know some guys can say, Hey, I'm I'm tired, my legs are tired today, blah blah blah. But man, you're a team locked in holding people in the 50s in a tournament setting, which are all good teams, you know. <laughs> you got Drexel, Zach does a great job, Towson, Takeo does a good job at Wilmington. So, like the toughest road and hold those great teams in your conference on the 60 points. Amazing on defensive end. Yeah, I mean, really proud of our guys. I mean, they dug in when they needed to. We had fifth-year seniors that came back with this extra year to uh, be able to compete for a championship and lead this team to a championship. Um, and we knew we had to we had to be better on the defensive end. Did I think we'd be able to do what we did down there, holding three teams in the 50s? We hadn't done that all year, so no. You know, we were giving up 70s. We had played – uh, Charleston 10 days ago and gave up 99 points on our home court. Um, but this group really strapped down when they needed to and did some tough stuff on that end of the floor. And, and it was infectious too. It was not one guy. It was the whole team kind of feeding off of each other and getting stops. And um, we buckled down and got it done with some versatility, whether we play big or small and, and the matchups were so important. Um, but to be able to go through the four seed, the one seed, the two seed to win it, um, I think that's icing on the cake that we went through the best of the best in our conference to be able to get it done. No doubt. And having player-led leadership, 50 seniors, man, who who came back to win. Talk about those young men who probably, when you won around, the coach went around, kind of encouraged their team and said, hey, we want to get this done this year. Talk about leadership with those guys, man, who really spearheaded this run for you guys. Yeah, I mean, that was so important for us. It was it was a group of guys that I was able to coach through and connect with our team. And they wanted it um, as much as anybody. And, you know, they led by example. They all have great influence on our team in different ways. But at the end of the day, when we needed them to lead the most and the best that they delivered for us um, for three straight nights. And it wasn't just one of them. They all kind of have their own different personalities. Um, but they were great in the huddles. They were great on the court. Kevin Anderson, Ryan Allen, Dylan Painter, um, you know, were fabulous. And, you know, I kept pressing, trying to press the right buttons with our group throughout the year and connect with those guys and those relationships. And, 
uh, really tried to foster those. And it was so important for us to, to have those guys connected at the hip as we went down to DC um, because when we needed those guys to play well, they didn't, they had not played great for us down the stretch and they would be the first ones to uh, admit that, you know, Dylan Painter got hurt. He's trying to work himself back in. And then Ryan Allen and Kevin Anderson really struggled scoring the basketball and playing good basketball for us. And we knew like, Hey man, if we're going to get it done down in DC. I need you guys to be great for us. Right. Great. The great leaders, um, you know, great in the locker room, set a good example for the younger guys. And, and they really did that for three straight days. And, and really even, you know, when we got back from Towson, like a week of preparation to be able to play Sunday, those guys were fabulous. And I think of watching a team coaches like this, man, like I saw you guys are, are, are one accord, like cheering for each other on the sidelines, man. I could tell you it was a real team. It wasn't just a one guy roster pretty much with one guy is just, is just running through things here, leading, leading the way. No, this is a, a truly, you are truly a team. And I think mm-hmm. that speaks to, speaks to your, pro, the kids in your program and what you and your staff have done because a lot, I was sorry, I love seeing teams win, not, not a, a one, one man show. And you, you are truly are from top to bottom, the guys who don't play, the guys who play off the bench, a true team. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, that's what we're trying to build here. That's That was my vision when I took over the program six years ago, to not just build a basketball team, but to build a basketball program and really establish a strong culture within our team. Uh, we have a great identity uh, of who we are, what we do, how we represent this university. And it was so fun to see the smiles on the guys' faces and everybody cheering for each other. Um, you know, we do have a talented team. We have seven guys on our team that have scored 20 points or more in a game. I don't think there's many teams in the country that have been able to do that. And then we have six guys that score in double figures. So it's not just one guy, right? This guy has to get us 20 every night for us to be able to have a chance. It's a really cohesive group on the offensive end. And each night, you know, you could be the star or you could be helping the star. And that was kind of my message to our group that we have so many pieces, like continue to trust in our process and what we do and how we play. And if we do that, we're going to have some chance. We're going to have a chance to do some special things. And you have what I love to see is a willing passers. I love that. <laughs> you want to get a, a good to great shot. Um, willing to, you might have a I don't want really to give my guy a better shot. I love that about your team because that's important. You know, unfortunately, in the NBA world I live in, I see a lot of hero he, he, he ball every night. <laughs> but in your yeah. world, I still have some willing passers, man. I love it. Well, you say, yeah, you, yeah you, you sound like you've been in my staff meetings or talking to our team because we say good to great all the time, no hero basketball. I always say we know the ball bounces like past the darn thing. Um, but we do have a team that, you know, as a former point guard, I played at Notre Dame, like that was who I was. I, I wanted my I want my teams to be able to reflect me and my personality and what's important to me and assist the turnover ratio, taking care of the basketball, but also sharing the basketball and being unselfish. Are, um, you know, really, really important things to me as as we've built this program. And, you know, that's it's a fun way to play. You know, when everybody's involved, everybody's touching the basketball. Um, there's only one ball out there, so got to keep everybody involved. When I played at Notre Dame, I played with Troy Murphy, who played in the NBA, Ryan Humphrey, who played in the NBA, Matt Cow. I used to tell him, like, hey, I got to keep all you guys happy, but I only have one basketball. So <laughs> I, I got to try to balance it out and spread the wealth around a little bit. No doubt, man. And talk about Jair Davis, man. Uh, Great tournament MVP now. Great run there. Talk about that young man and, and what he's done, done for you guys, man, this year, man. Yeah, he's been fabulous. Um, you know, he's such a pleasure to coach. He's a really hard worker. He's got a great personality. Um, and then he was a kid that you know, went to Providence, didn't play. Uh, he was a McDonald's All-American candidate as a young guy and, you know, uh, top 25 player as a freshman. And then, you know, uh, had a tough run in the high school ranks at times and then went to Providence, didn't play, got had an injury, came back home and then just worked really, really hard uh, to put himself in the position and you know the opportunity uh, that was there for him when Dylan Painter went down like boy did he deliver for us uh, he stepped in right away he had 22 points seven rebounds six assists in his first game where he got major minutes and then from that point on I think he scored in double figures every night I mean he's a terrific talent um, and then I tell people when we got him he wants to be a point forward right? Maybe more point than forward. And I convinced him, we got him to the point where he needed to be more forward than point and where he can make an impact at this level. And right around the basket, man, he went to work and uh, such an important piece for us, focal point of our offense. 
Uh, and then he was fabulous down in D.C. on the defensive end. He guarded Sims on a lot of those last couple possessions where he needed to get stops, got some big rebounds for us, and just a really efficient basketball player that has such a high ceiling. No doubt, man. And what I love as well, like, you are – that guys who you played, um, you played them tough during the league year. So I feel like your mm -hmm. guys weren't scared of them. And, like, like I know when a plus situation, I've seen a guy already – I know what you're going to do for the most part. I've seen your own film. I'm not scared of you. I know what you can and cannot do. Now it's about me, about me beating you at, at your game. So, so like, when you play Wilmington, like, Takeo was a great job. They was yeah. up there all year long. But your guys went in there like, man, we got this. So it's mm -hmm. about seeing guys numerous times being comfortable with their schemes and knowing what's coming. So you can kind of – all about executing on your end there to make sure you get the job done and make the winning plays you need, you need to make in that game. Yeah, I mean, I think our guys had a chip on our shoulder being able to, uh, you know, go down to D.C. and have an opportunity to play Towson and UNC Wilmington again. We just lost to both teams at the end of the season. You know, very familiar with their group and their personnel. Obviously, both of those teams um, shared a conference championship. And, you know, I told our guys leading into the tournament, like, I believe that we believe that we're the best team in the league. Right. And those guys agree with that. And I said, we, we now we need to start playing like it because we lost to Wilmington twice. We lost a thousand twice. We split with Drexel. We lost, you know, a couple home games that we shouldn't have lost on our floor. But I think those experiences hardened our group. Um, we played with a chip on our shoulder as we went down to D.C. And um, I think the familiarity with our opponents and recent performances helped us uh, be in a position to cut down nets on, on Tuesday night. No doubt, man. Talk about the environment down in terms of what's in D.C., man. Uh, a new, new, new dad now this year, this year, man. Talk me about the environment, how cool it was to be down there, nation's capital, and uh, being at where the Mrs. play at now. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, we, you know, we went down on Friday and I just thought getting into the city and feeling the energy of the city. We stayed in the wharf, great restaurants and shops around there. Guys could get out there and, and enjoy D.C. Some guys walked over to the Capitol. Some guys walked over to the Washington Monument. We took our team out to get a really nice dinner on Friday night at Capitol Grill, get them a good steak and everything, treat them right. Um, and I think that kept our guys loose. So uh, it's a nice arena down there. You know, I think it seats about 4,000. And the great thing for us being so close on Tuesday night, it was a home crowd for us. And we had three busloads of students coming down, our community, the fans really rallied around this team. So we had great energy in the building. And it was awesome to be able to celebrate them, celebrate Tuesday night with our fans and community and, and family and friends. I hope President Biden, Senator Coons, called you guys. <laughs> See, Delaware guys. I, I hope they. Governor Carney was down there. And Governor Carney was down there for a couple of games. He loves hoops. He's a, he's a big fan of our program. Um, but yeah, we wait. We, we, I guess we'll wait for uh, President Biden to maybe call and touch base. I know he's a busy man right now, though. You got that right. So, so Coach, that's <laughs> busy, man. So, how do you balance? Uh, Russ versus rest, man, because I know you want to get some guys off their feet, but you also keep them sharp as well, not knowing when you guys may play coming to the tournament selection on Sunday here, man. So how do you kind of balance that right there? Yeah, so we gave them yesterday and today off. We're going to come back tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon, get in the weight room, maybe do some skill work, and then we'll get back to practice on Saturday. Um, you know, I, I, the great thing for us is we had a couple of days to be able to enjoy this. I want our guys to be able to enjoy it and they're on campus. They're, they're the big men on campus right now, so soak it all in. But there'll be a time where we got to get back to some business and preparation, and, and we'll find out where they're sending us on Sunday night. And wherever they ship us, we'll be uh, ready to roll, and I'm sure we'll be paying a great opponent. But give us a, it'll have a couple of days to prepare as we um, you know get back to things this weekend. Well, Coach, I'll be cheering for you, brother. I'll put you in my bracket. I'm going to make sure I advance you in my bracket, man, because I got confidence in you, man. Right, right. Hey, man, like UMBC can do it, you know. There's some great, sexy 15, 14 picks there, and we'll see where they send us. And we're just excited to be in it, thrilled to be in it. So happy so happy for our players to be able to experience this. And um, there's nothing better than for a college athlete, college basketball player, to see your team's name pop up there on Selection Sunday and see who we're playing. No doubt. Coach Inglesby, you be safe, man. I'll enjoy our chats, man. Do his games with you soon, brother. All right, boss, man. I appreciate it. Have a great one. You see you, man. See you.